Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Tuesdays at 8. You are in for a real treat tonight because we are going to be asking lots of questions. And one of the first questions that we always ask is, what is visual faith? So I'm going to show you in a video. Hello everyone, tonight I have two guests. Last week was four, down to two, but I have two very special people here tonight. Our first guest is Carolyn, Carolyn Bira, and she lives in Michigan, and she is actually a visual faith coach. She is a lifelong Christ follower. She is a wife to Cliff for 42 years, yay, mother to two daughters, and grandmother to five grandchildren. She is soon to be the retired director of Christian education for 40 years. Oh my gosh. She's a writer, a reader, a computer game player. Well, Welcome, Carolyn. We're so glad you're here this evening. Thank you. It's really cool to be here. And our other guest is, a lot of you know, Connie Denninger. And she is the co-founder of Visual Faith, along with Pat Meyer. And both of them have been on quite a few times on Tuesdays at 8. And we asked Connie to come in this evening and share a little bit of the story of what Carol, how she and Carolyn work together to create a series of Bible studies that are really about the spiritual foundation for visual faith. So... Um, we're going to be talking about and asking a lot of questions. I think you're going to hear because basically what we have a new document now and it's all four Bible studies together and it is called why visual faith. So Connie, I'm going to turn it over to you to explain. Can you answer that question? Why visual faith? Well, I think, um, Maybe one of the things you wanted to do is, Carolyn, would you like to open us in a prayer here? This Thank you for reminding me. Sure. Carolyn opens us with a prayer. Thank sure, you. I'd be happy to do that. Heavenly Father, awesome God. We give you thanksgiving and praise that we uh, get to be here tonight. We get to be in each other's company. And we invite you, Holy Spirit, to join us for this time um, of inspiration and insight, of understanding, and even a little bit of Bible study. We are excited, Lord, to see what you will pour out, and to you belongs all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for catching that. <laughs> That's okay. That's all right. Um, I think it's very fun tonight. I printed off my copy of the new Bible study and as always, anytime our resources get updated, it is as fun for us um, you know, in the middle of all of this to see how they look when they get reshaped and um, added to. And so tonight I'm here just to give you a little bit of the background about the Bible study and why I think it's an important resource for people that are new to visual faith or maybe people that have been doing this for a long time but have never printed off the Bible study to look at. So I'll give you some of that background and then Carolyn will tell you more of the story of actually putting the resources together. I think because I have been practicing visual faith practices for a long time, what we found as I was trying to help others in the journey was to see how do you explain what's been going on and the story of that. And as I began thinking about that and looking at the resources, 
I began to see sort of a pattern and the words kept coming as I looked at the resources. Well, this one really helps us for remembering. This is a resource that's really kind of along the line of a trust process. This one is helpful for us in discipling others or as we are being discipled ourselves. And then the last one was always understanding that spiritual formation happens for the sake of others. Um, it's never for our own self um, in some kind of bubble away from the world, away from others. So we began to look at the resources and I, I really felt that they weren't things. One of the fun thing in creating the new visual that um, Diane has is that it's sort of a permeable circle and there's not just one way of going around. We start with remember, trust, disciple, and tell, but you might go kind of back and forth and a little bit of one and um, sometimes a practice really holds all solid, um, all four of the things. So we needed to have some language to help people explain to other people what was happening to them in their spiritual journey. And then I began to get requests from people early on asking, you know, do you have a Bible study that we can do to introduce people to? And I said, no. <laughs> and, do you have something that we can do in our small group or our LWML group or our neighborhood group is meeting to do and learn about visual faith practices? Do you have Bible studies to help us teach them? And I said, no, we don't. And so that's really when Pat Meyer came to the rescue and she said you know and i had been really reading carolyn's um blog for a long time and i said she is just such a um great person to find kernels of truth in god's word and i said why don't we see if carolyn will do some um putting together a bible study for us so that we have a tool that if you're going to meet um you know for one month and do a four week Bible study, you had an actual tool that you could not only study why it's important, we believe visual faith practices are important, spend some time in God's word, but then there were also some simple tools that you could process right along with people. So that's kind of the background to the Bible study. And we believe that um, it's a Bible study that probably not all of our coaches have even done. And so we're hoping maybe after tonight, everybody will go and download this and we'll be doing this. I think the important thing that we continue to learn about these practices is everything is better done in community. So even if you would do this privately, the discussion and the learning and the discipling really happens when that's done in community. So we thank Carolyn for bringing this tool for us. And that's just a little bit of the background of, uh, we believe it's a helpful thing for people to have why visual faith, we can point to God's word as, you know, the compass for why we're doing what we're doing. Thank you, Connie. I love your story because you're right, you were doing visual faith and then trying when people would ask you and, and then you really didn't have it all put together. So I'm really excited that after three years, we've had some tools that we've, because we've got the three years experience, we were able to really wrap our hands around it, use Carolyn's great um, writing and Bible studies to really give that to people. Well, let's look at there's four words. So if you walk away from tonight and hopefully we want you to remember this, the four words, remember, trust, disciple, and tell. Mm -hmm. So Carolyn, why don't you take over? And if you want to just share a little bit about um, the verses that we've used and what it really means. Oh, sure. I'd be happy to. Um, I was handed these um, words and these verses. I wasn't a part of coming up with which ones, but that really wasn't a problem. Um, I'm always happy to uh, pick up a verse and just look at it and think about it. I want to tell you just a little bit about how I come up with a Bible study. It, I just, I, I read the verse and I think, okay, what does that say to me? What, what's jumping off the page for me right now? And that's what I write about. If I were to write these four Bible studies today, they'd be completely different. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. because I would, something new would jump off the page for me, uh, which that's kind of cool, but I don't know how to, uh, how to describe that experience for me, but I try to put it on paper. The first word that <clears throat> you had up there was remember. And I, I, I love this because if we can remember what God has done, that is a faith grower like nothing else. If you can look back over your life and remember what God has done in and through your life, your faith will grow. And when you share that story, when you tell those stories to other people, their faith grows as well. They become part of your story. They become part of that faith growth experience because you have told them what you remember. Now you've discipled someone. Now you've used your faith walk to disciple another person. And isn't that the goal? That That's the goal every day. And finally, uh, the last word that, that I want to talk about tonight a little bit more is the word trust. There are four of these studies. <clears throat> Each one has a different um, thrust. And the one on trust um, has a little exercise that goes with it that I wanted us to kind of talk to tonight. So if you grab yourself a piece of paper and a pencil, <clears throat> and this actually appears on the Trust Bible Study if you've um, downloaded them, but grab yourself a piece of paper and a pencil, and I want you to write the word trust in block letters, open block letters like this. Just open, and they don't have, it doesn't have to be pretty, just big enough. And I would say make your, your letters, you know, two, two, three, four inches tall. This is like a uh, hundred point font on here. So write out the word trust. And we're going to work th through um, probably many, many people's favorite verse about trust, which is Proverbs 3, uh, 5 through 7. And uh, the verse that I want us to talk to tonight is just verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. I want to tell you a little story. Back in, um, well, it's been a very many years ago, my youngest daughter, Bethany, graduated from high school. Then in August, she turned 18, and three weeks after her 18th birthday, we put her on an airplane, and she flew to Madrid because she was going to college in Madrid in Spain. That was awesome. Three weeks after she left was 9-11, and the Twin Towers came down, and my daughter was in Madrid, and I could not get to her. And, and if you know me, you'll know I'm a control freak. I wanted to fly there myself. If I could have flapped my arms and gotten there, I would have and picked her up and brought her home. But I couldn't do that. We couldn't, there was, we couldn't talk to her. She didn't, it was before the big days of big cell phones. We didn't all have smartphones. Mm -hmm. And so there she was. We couldn't talk to her. We couldn't find her. We didn't know where she was, just that she was on campus and that hopefully she was staying there. I was praying all night long um, the night after 9-11, asking God, please help my daughter. Please help my daughter. I'm so scared. And he kind of took me through a process. And he took me, this is so strange, he took me to the story of the Columbine kids, the kids in Columbine High School, whose parents sent them to school that morning, totally unafraid, expecting them to come home. And 11 of them didn't. I thought, well, okay, what does that have to do with my daughter? And then, and God doesn't ever usually speak to me in words, but he showed me a picture of Bethany standing in his hand. And, and, he, and he kind of helped me understand that he, she was in his hand, whether she was in Madrid or in her bedroom across the hall. Mm -hmm. He still had her, and I had to trust that. That's one of my favorite trust stories. That changed, that night changed my life because suddenly I was able to release both my kids into his hands and trust him with my most precious possession. <laughs> That's what I want you to think about right now. What do you trust God with? And I want you to write those words, those children's names, those grandchildren's names, your house, your job, I don't care what it is, your best friend, Write that stuff in those inside those letters, inside those inside that word trust. What are you trusting God for? Are you trusting Him to keep you free from COVID? 
Are you trusting him to cure someone you know who has COVID? Are you trusting him to get your job back that you lost? Are you tr What are you trusting him for? Mm -hmm. Just take a minute and put some of those things down. Remember what God has done for you. Remember that those times. How have you trusted God? What do you trust him with right now today? And after you've taken that time, I want you to just keep that piece of paper, maybe tuck it in a Bible. Because what you want to do now is pull it out every now and maybe you'll add some things to it. Maybe you need a, a, a time to remember what you have trusted God for and how faithful he has been to you. And that's, that's just one little exercise I wanted you to do tonight as we think about what it means to bring Bible study into our, our visual faith practices. That was, that was very, very powerful, powerful. Carolyn. Oh, hold on, my sound is echoing. It was so powerful. I hope you all are actually doing it while you're watching this. And if you have any comments or want to share, Maybe you had a revelation or um, something you didn't realize. Maybe you weren't giving to God to trust. We'd love to hear some of your comments about that. While you're while you're thinking about those comments, I want to I want to let you know that these Bible studies are meant to be done in 10 or 15 minutes. They aren't meant to take up your whole uh, visual faith time that you have with your groups. Um, they're, they're just to introduce you into the word, uh, to get your group reading God's word and thinking about it, pondering it. What I know is that you will create some amazing things um, when you read the word. Um, and I always stand in awe. Uh, I, I watch these, these Tuesdays at eight uh, and I'm always like, Oh my goodness, I couldn't do any of that if you, I couldn't, I don't know how, I don't have the skill set. But what I can do is write about it. So I, I don't count myself out, but I, what I, I am in awe of what you do. So I know that some of you are already thinking, ooh, here's what I could draw about this verse, about trust. And that is exciting. That's what visual faith is all about. That's just really exciting. So we don't know Facebook user. Um, we'd love to have you join us many times. So next time you sign in, you have to sign in with your name and give Facebook permission to show you. But thank you. So powerful. Donna says, needed to hear this. This week has been a challenge for me with this word. Thank you, Donna, for being vulnerable and sharing that. Trust is hard. Yes, it is. And my friend Shamika Trusting God to be a mom, no matter, no matter what that looks like. Oh, that's really powerful, Shamika. Yes, it is. Connie, you want to read this one? Martha says, I am also a control freak, and it's so hard for me to understand that my children are grown and I can't control what they do. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, we're kind of, a lot of us are in that spot. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's a bummer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, as much as we want to control them, we, we can't. Okay, I've got another comment. Um, Carolyn, do you want to share that one? Oh, what a powerful story, faith story. I was forced to experience deeper trust through the three times that cancer changed the lives of close family members. Doesn't make it easy, but it's a relief to lay it all in Jesus' perfectly capable hands. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Pat. Mm -hmm. And what I love about that is the first time it seems impossible. How can you trust him when this horrible situation is happening? And then it happens again. So Pat, I'm going to ask you a question. Maybe you'll respond to us. Was it easier? Was it quicker? Were you able to trust him quicker? Were you able to trust him maybe even more completely? Because um, boy, you had three opportunities to trust. I love when God gives me those situations that sometimes I don't like that. I have to go through it. <laughs> uh, we've got another comment. Jenny says during the pandemic, I worked through, Oh, the visual faith Colossians Bible study that Carolyn wrote. 
Uh, Spirit inspired words and Pat's lovely artwork. This study brought me peace during the pandemic. Thank you very much, Jenny. Praise God. Yes. And I know that Emily is on tonight. Emily, maybe you could link that for everyone so they know exactly where it is. Um, if you look under devotional Bible studies, there's a Colossians Bible study. Thanks for sharing that, Jenny. Well, I think one of the important things is to help people remember that visual faith practices center in it's God's word. And mm -hmm. our whole goal is trying to help people spend more time reading God's word and in more time in prayer. So, um, you know, as I said before, these aren't the only words that we could come up with. Like Carolyn said, she could come up with four whole new Bible studies around <laughs> these words now, and we could flesh out four more words and four more words. But yeah. if you have to have the four words that explain to somebody, you know, this process, that journey you've been on maybe in visual faith practices, you know, what has this meant to you in your spiritual formation? We hope that the words remember, trust, disciple, and tell help you tell that story because you can begin to shape what you're learning and where you're growing and use these words to help tell the story. So we hope they're helpful to people. I love this comment. Bev, our buddy Bev, so nice to have a Bible study to back up our practices, especially to share with those who think it's just about coloring. Yeah. <laughs> Don't understand the spiritual piece. Thanks, Bev. That's very, very true. Um, and I think if you all are able to download the study and spend any time looking at, you will be... Um, very surprised. One of the comments that I want to make sure um, everybody knows is what I love about this is Carolyn uh, wrote these Bible studies and was fairly new to visual faith practices. Correct, Carolyn? Oh, yeah. So, yeah. So what this is so perfect, I think, is because we've been able to incorporate some very beginning visual faith practices right in this study. So when she just asked you to do the trust, as she kind of shown you, showed you this first page of this one particular study there, it's already in there to do that. And then what you're going to be so excited about on the second page or one of the pages, Pat Meyer has created Bible margins with each of these words. So it gives you the opportunity to have, if you've never done visual faith and somebody made a comment, can we do this at our church and things like that? Yes. Here's a quick way for them to do some coloring, as Beth said, and to practice that. But you're still deep into God's word and how it applies to your life. And that each one of the studies um, has that. We've got some other great comments. Okay. Let me show this one. Do you want to read that, Connie? Trusting God to keep my family healthy and safe during this time of rampant COVID in the areas where they live. Yeah, and I just listened to the news tonight in Indiana's number two hot spot in the nation and my whole family is, really? is there in, right now. Indiana? What, what happened to Indiana that all of a sudden it is? Well, it's just bad. It's really bad oh, there wow. as of today. And talked to my brother today and just many, many, many stories of that impacting lives there. So, mm. yeah. Carolyn, do you want to read Shamika's comment? Thank you for all this. This has been such a blessing in my surrendering and having that intimate connection with God. Well, isn't that just the goal? Thank you. That's awesome. It's a good comment. And then Patricia, I think, uh, answered my question. Myself still rebelled and there was panic that I pushed down but God showed what it really means to take one day at a time and pray and seek his word each day for strength needed that day. The second and third time I fell back on verses that encouraged the first time around. Oh, thank you for sharing that, Pat. Yeah. Don't we always say, I don't know how somebody gets through some of these very difficult situations and they don't have God. I really, I don't get that sometimes. I sure don't. Oh, Emily said, most of my family's in Indiana too, Connie. So yeah. Yeah. lots of people that that's uh, COVID is, a, is affecting. So are there any questions um, about the study? I, there's a couple comments. I'm going to go, let me go back up to the top and get them. 
Um, oh, here. Jenny asked, could we participate virtually in this Visual Faith Bible study as a small group of coaches in the new year? We already got one person, Con. Yay. A cool idea. You're reading our mind, Jenny. Yes. Yes, Jenny. That's one of our goals. So we really hope that um, we're hoping you, that that's a, we'll be able to, to do that. Yeah. yeah. You have to know that um, in the visual phase still runs into needing to convince to convince church leadership that this is a valid practice. And so one of the things um, reason why this Bible study was put together and we needed a really solid um, person to do that in Carolyn was to be able to take it to a church council and say, you know, this stuff is, you know, biblically, biblically based ministry. And we really wanted something solid for people to be able to use um, as they were trying to explain to leadership about what visual faith is. And so Carolyn's work has really helped to do that for us too. And you see Emily's comment, this would be a yeah. great opportunity. Go ahead and read it. <laughs> yeah, this would be a great opportunity to teach your pastors and lay leaders about this practice so it could be implemented in a congregational setting. Oh. Yeah, yeah. I think even just sending them the resource or, you know, offering to work with with people. Um, I think the, the whole Zoom idea, you know, it's lay led Bible study Zoom, our whole community and people in the visual faith world, everyone out there could take this Bible study and invite three friends to do it along with them. You don't need to be a visual faith coach to do this with a group of people on Zoom. Not at all. So. And Jennifer tells us, thank you for being so real. It is encouraging that I am not alone. Yes, you are not alone, Jennifer. No. And Debbie said, oh, Carolyn, why don't you read this? It's for you. <laughs> the LWML Rocky Mountain District will be doing the Colossians Bible study online in January. We're gathering together in the Word, even when we are separated by miles and COVID-19 restrictions. That's fantastic. The Colossians study, let me just say, it's um, far more in-depth, and the studies are designed to take upwards to an hour. The ones for the four words are, are brief and meant to be introductory. The Colossians study covers the entire four chapters of Colossians, and it's um, it's pretty in depth. So I, I will pray for your study. That's awesome. That would be great. Donna says, "I would love a virtual Bible study with this group. What a great way to prepare to lead one in our own congregations." Well, now that's an aspect we hadn't even talked about, ladies. Is if we did it as quote coaches, you know, online uh, or together in a virtual way, then we're actually coaching and discipling <laughs> our coaches. So we just talked about that. You know, we're then we're going to disciple the people that already know or like or new to visual faith. Then they can go into their church and do that, and then you know become uh, they're discipling too. So it's really a rolling effect, which is great. Any other questions about how the study works? Um, if you've ever done one of Carolyn's studies, if anybody's done the Colossians, somebody did mention that uh, earlier. And then we've got another plug for you, Carolyn. Go ahead. Read that one. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's Pat. Thanks, Pat. We'd love for you to author more Bible studies for us. And I would be happy to. All you have to do is tell me what you want to do, because if I have to pick, they're going to be long. <laughs> People are begging you now. Look. <laughs> well, it, it's nice when we have uh, Bible studies to use written by um, female believers yes. in the church body. And it's, um, you know, really solid, clear, doctrinally sound um, Bible studies. It's just a real treat for us to lift up. Um, a female Bible writer and something that we can share in our communities. And that's just a real blessing. Carolyn, we're just truly blessed to have you as, as part of our team as a writer. Well, I really appreciate it. I'm glad you don't want me to be a part of your team as an artist because that isn't going to happen. <laughs> but I do appreciate getting to be a, a part of the team as a writer. Yes, we all have guests. And that's well, we do. <laughs> part of what makes um, this community kind of amazing. It, it is. Together to support each other and what we're doing. So um, truly, truly um, awesome. 
Oh, yeah. see this one, Carolyn. Do you know Joy? I do. Go ahead. Uh, she, she she came to a a, a um, sermon um, sketch noting thing that uh, Valerie Matthias last led. Oh, okay. And uh, it was it was amazing and changed my life actually. Valerie came and presented about sketch noting, and uh, I have not missed a sermon. I have a whole notebook now full of sermon notes that I could go back and tell you what Cliff preached about a year ago. Ooh, that's from a Glancy. It, it was a it was a joy. It was a joy. It changed my life. That's changed my life. Wonderful. That's great. Yep. Well, and that's the fun thing when we hear or find one practice that is life changing for us in our spiritual walk yep. or our spiritual journey. Um, whoever thought that you know listening to sermons and recounting that could be fun? But <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> that's right. That's well, nice. and you ask Cliff, he'll be able to tell you. I usually couldn't tell you what the sermon was about by the time the offering came around. So <laughs> <laughs> when I say changed my life, I do mean that. <laughs> Well, that's wonderful. Writes that writers are visual faith yes. artists too, and you're writing with words and you're yes. drawing pictures with words. And so that is really important to see the interfacing of, of both those. And in, in, um, most of our churches have used words, 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 and um, has been an auditory processing style. And this right. kind of comes alongside everybody who's um, front and center and maybe a visual kinesthetic lead learner but we still yeah. need both and so it's the combined um use of both of them i think that's really powerful true mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and tracy's one of our newest visual faith uh practitioners we all have a place in the body of christ thank you sisters for your obedience yes thank you very much and joy said me too it's been helpful taking notes especially online sermons <laughs> yeah you know, what's fun is we all took notes to get through high school, college, right? I mean, you all, ever, everybody wrote notes. What I love about sketch notes is you get to make it fun. I mean, you're going to write it down anyway. So why not put it in a great um, alphabet font or make some little doodles around it? That's what's so wonderful about uh, sketch notes. And then Patricia gave you a link. That Carolyn wrote early on about journaling with her grandchildren. So yeah. you all can click on that. Mm -hmm. And let's see, Mary Magnuson says, I had to take sermon notes for three years during confirmation, seventh to ninth grade, and still do. But now I do sketch noting and share them with the pastor. I love it. Very good. Yes, oh. Masha, who's the queen of sketch notes, will be on my show soon. I'm going oh, to that'll be exciting. Yeah, it's going to be really, really fun. Yeah. One of the things I want to bring up for those of you who um, are obedient and tune in every Tuesday night at eight o'clock, or you've caught a couple of our episodes, is that I don't want anybody to think, oh, they're giving me something else. I have to add to my list of to do's mm -hmm. because we're in Advent started Sunday and we showed you all the Advent things and then go back a couple of weeks and we showed you all the wonderful Thanksgiving things to do. And the most important thing, and Connie talks about this all the time, and so does Pat, is our goal is to show you lots of different ways to practice visual faith. And most of us will recommend, try it. Just try it for a day or a week or something. If you don't like it, okay, that, well, that's not your thing. And then go on to the next thing. If there was only one way and then you tried it and then there was nothing else to do, you would never have be able to go that deep that we find a lot of us are able to do with multiple visual faith tools. So this one tonight is if you want to understand and maybe God's giving you those four words, remember, trust, disciple, and tell. And he wants you to maybe even focus on that. As Carolyn said, these are not our two hour, three hour Bible studies. So you can do it that long if you want to by doing more research. But if you want to just explore those Bible verses and do some of the, the journaling and things that she has in there. That's a way for you to add that to whatever you're practicing. If you're doing any kind of Advent calendars or any of the Advent or Christmas things that we've given you. So please don't hear us that we're adding more things for your to-do list. It's these are some tools that may work for you as some people have shared. One of the things I had a friend say, you know, I've, I've struggled with explaining to my spouse of what visual faith is and what had happened to me. 
and she said the the four words gave me something to explain to my sp spouse to simply say oh, that's cool. things that I do help me to remember trust disciple and tell and, mm -hmm. and that was just a very simple way for me to try and help um, my husband understand a little bit more about what a, what I was doing and what I was focused on spending time on differently than I had been focused in that for any of the time in my marriage. And so I think um, we're not trying to make it complicated. Mm -hmm. and so it's a simple tool that that that's good. Donna says I was a horrible note taker until I combined my love for doodling with note taking doodling with purpose. That's good. We need to use that. That's a good one. And then our Facebook user says, I'm more academic oriented than art oriented, but visual faith has opened more ability for me to retain the word. And so I love both. And that's, that's one of the huge keys. That's if you're retaining more then you're able to tell, you're able to remember, you're able to disciple. And that's really, um, that's really the importance. Oh, that's a good comment, Emily. You want to read that one, um, Connie? Yeah, Emily says, I've had seasons of visual faith. I was introduced to it in 2012, but it was 2019 before it began a daily weekly practice for me. And that's really important to remember because um, a lot of what we're showing and telling people, it's really the Holy Spirit's movement and time yeah. schedule for you. And you cannot push and move and design that yourself, you can simply be open for the movement and leading of the Holy Spirit. So if this is sort of a um, try it out and come back to it again season, that's okay. Because um, it's really about just waiting and listening. And when the Holy Spirit says now that you are obedient to try something. So mm -hmm. thanks, Emily. That's helpful. Mm -hmm. Carolyn. Oh, I, I want to read this one because I totally relate to this. So many good ideas that it's hard to pick just one. It can be overwhelming. I totally relate to that. Um, when I watch you ladies and the cool things you can do, I am overwhelmed. And I, I always think, oh, I want to try that. I want to try that. It, it can be in, indeed overwhelming is the best word. So instead, focus, focus, focus. Mm -hmm. Try one. Mm -hmm. And Martha says, I'm learning that my doodling doesn't have to be perfect. Great lesson. Just needs to help me be deeper in the word. That's exactly right. And that's the whole kinesthetic story. If you've never heard Connie or Pat talking about that. I mean, that's been proven that that kinesthetic ability actually does and really imprint it in your mind and your heart as you're um, studying the word. And then, okay, guess who the Facebook user is? It's Karen, Karen Field. <laughs> Thanks for telling us who you are. <laughs> She's an academically oriented person. So thank you very much. We really appreciate that. Well, uh, we've got like another minute or so. If you have any more comments or questions, uh, we did get, Emily put the link up early on in this and uh, in this chat that you can see and it will be uh, available. It's available now. It's actually up on the site. So you can go there and it's really beautiful. And that first graphic, let me show you one more time. That's actually on the front page. Well, no, this is not the exact graphic, but that is there. So you will see that um, when you get your document, so you'll have the pretty graphic and then maybe that'll help you, you know, to use that um, to walk yourself through it. Oh, here we go. Let's see. Faye says, last week we talked about a fall garland. This week I've decorated for Christmas. Since the fall garland doesn't match, I have used my Cricut to cut out ornaments that I will have the grandchildren decorate. Put each family member's name on the ornament, add a spiritual word, and create a Christmas garland. Well, thank you for sharing that. See, and that's that's a perfect ex um, example of don't get overwhelmed. Make Let things work for you. And a lot of women have been talking. Uh, we've had a lot of comments on the Facebook group about some of the Jesse Tree ornaments and things that they're printed out and their grandchildren are there and the grandchildren are having fun and there you are discipling and telling and creating a legacy with some really fun things that they, um, you know, really enjoy doing. So, oh, thank you, 
Okay. That also shows the extensions, I think, you know, we give one basic idea and then people come up with, you know, 10, 15 more ways to use it or mm -hmm. to personalize it for who they are. And that's, there's just no way it's a very organic kind of uh, yeah. process. Mm, excellent. Well, we're getting close to our end time. If I don't see any more comments, I think I'll be ready to uh, say thank you. And so I think one thing I would like each of you to maybe share is what ha have you learned or experienced from like, say for you, Connie, the fact that you got these four words and for you, Carolyn, that you were given those four words and wrote a Bible study, just share a parting comment about how that's impacted you. Carolyn, you can start. Uh, anytime I'm asked to write a Bible study, it impacts me because really all I'm doing is putting what God is giving to me on paper. Um, quite often I sit down and think, uh, okay, I got nothing here. And that is absolutely true. That's always true. I have nothing here. But God always has something. He always has something, something new to share, some new thought to have about a verse I've read a thousand times. And that happened with these four four verses because they're very common. They're very regular verses, but they were all exciting to write about. Thank you. How about you, Connie? Well, I think, you know, the, the verse about teaching your children from generation to generation, that was the very early on thing when I was working this out in family ministry setting is how do we help tell the next generation what, you know, God's faithfulness has, has, um, been to each of us so i think the four words are simple enough that children understand so i think as you're learning and um, exploring visual faith practices that these would be words that you could also share with children and even young children about why you're participating and doing the, these things with them i think these words will help them to understand and make sense to them too so we hope we hope it's helpful mm. thank you both thank you so much for coming um, on to Tuesdays at eight and our live event during this busy season. We thank you both for sharing your wisdom. We thank you, Connie, for um, following the Holy Spirit's leading into creating visual faith and to really thinking all of this through and the legacy that you've created in your discipling, how many people you've discipled and then we disciple. So it's so an exponential. And thank you, Carolyn, for um, following through and saying yes instead of no <laughs> to actually writing some uh, Bible studies for us. We really, really appreciate it. Thanks. So ladies, I'm going to say thank you to our, we had, I think, 38 people on tonight at the highest number. So thank you. We're so happy that you all were able to come. And remember that we ask you to join us next week for more conversation, encouragement, and inspiration. And as always, follow-up conversations will be in our Visual Faith Facebook group. So we hope that you are in our group, you've joined our group, and that you will participate. We would love to continue the conversation here tonight. If you end up downloading the Bible study and actually doing it on your own or with a small group or scheduling that. We'd love to hear about your experience and stay tuned because hopefully we will be scheduling something in the new year to maybe do this as a virtual Bible study. So I say thank you and I say good night and I hope you have a good the rest of the week.